These are the first published data from Japanese space agency JAXA's shiny new X-ray explorer, GRISM. But what exactly are we seeing here? And does this mean JAXA's curse with X-ray telescopes finally ends? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu. Welcome back to my channel. I spoke about the details of GRISM in a previous video, so check that out if you haven't already. But today, let's take a closer look at the first GRISM data. The X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy mission GRISM is JAXA's new X-ray telescope, which means it scans the skies for sources of X-rays, those high-energy photons that we can't see with our eyes. These come from the hottest and most violent events in our universe, things like black holes and clusters of galaxies. The Earth also blocks out X-rays from space, which is kind of good because it protects us from the harsh radiation, but it means that we can't learn about the X-ray universe from our ground-based telescopes like from optical telescopes. We can only do it from space. Now, GRISM is equipped with two instruments on board. EXTEND is a wide field imaging CCD, perfect for capturing large views of the skies to pick up transient events like stellar explosions and monitor time-varying X-ray stars, so stars which change in their X-ray brightness over time but also getting that full extent of extended objects like clusters of galaxies, which are huge. So it's no wonder GRISM decided to showcase the galaxy cluster ABEL 2319 as its first observation. ABEL 2319 is actually two galaxy clusters colliding together 770 million light years away. You can see the main core here and the subcluster here. The purple is the X-ray light measured by GRISM, light that's emitted by the million degree intracluster gas. The image is superimposed with optical imaging from ground-based observations of the digitized sky survey, DSS. And this shows the galaxies in the clusters and its surroundings. GRISM's field of view is so massive, it's managed to image this entire system in a single shot. In comparison, here is what you would see with the area of NASA's X-ray telescope Chandra, and here are the areas of previous Japanese X-ray telescopes Aska and Suzaku. To put that into perspective, GRISM's area covers an area larger than the apparent size of the full moon. It's spread over four CCDs, which you can clearly make out here. The massive area observed allows us to see both the cluster and its surroundings, so we can learn about the local environmental impacts on the galaxy clusters. Here we see uneven, swirling-like structure which shows the gas is churning and sloshing around over vast distances, which is exactly what you'd expect from a galaxy cluster undergoing merging and interactions. The second instrument on board is RESOLVE, which is used to produce high-resolution X-ray spectra. RESOLVE's first published data is the spectra of N132D, the brightest supernova remnant in the Large Magellanic Clouds, so the remnants of a star about 15 times more massive than our Sun after it's exploded. This is what it looked like through Hubble and Chandra. And this is what the supernova remnant looks like through the imager extend. Now, Resolve isn't an imager, but it is a spectrometer microcalorimeter, which means it gets the spectra. Remember, like optical spectra, X-ray spectra splits the X-ray emission of a source into its distributions over energies. So like the energy on the X-axis against the number of photons or intensity of emission at that energy on the Y-axis. But the microcalorimeter part means that it measures the magnitude of energy through the temperature changes of an X-ray photon hitting the detector. The microcalorimeter makes it possible to measure the X-ray source's temperature, composition, velocity, and the location at which the photon hits with amazing precision. Different elements will emit X-rays at characteristic energies when they're heated to high temperatures. 
So for example, iron emits at 6.4 kilo electron volts. This is the broad iron K line and it occurs because atoms have electrons arranged in shells. The closest shell to the nucleus is the K shell followed by L, M, N and so on. When excited, the atom, which in our case is iron, can eject an electron in the K shell, so the one closest to the nucleus, resulting in an electron in a higher shell, so in the L shell, to drop down and fill the ejected electron's place. The difference in energies between the L and the K shells will be 6.4 keV, that's the peak that we see here. In addition to the iron K line, Resolve has picked up peaks corresponding to silicon, sulfur, argon and calcium. And by analysing the energies at which x-rays are emitted, we're not only determining which elements are present, but with the microcalorimeter, we can see where the elements are present. The spectra is so detailed in comparison to that of JAXA's previous x-ray telescope, Suzaku, where you can barely make out any emission lines at all. In fact, the resolution of the emission lines is so high that GRISM can be used to track the circulation of elements from the Doppler shifts of the lines, i.e how the lines move around. From GRISM, we'll be able to see how elements are produced and distributed throughout our universe, which is incredible really. And then also see how black holes grow by accreting gas, how that gas moves, and how they shape their environments. Now, here comes the caveats. JAXA is known to be cursed with their efforts of X-ray telescopes. Suzaku suffered a malfunction with their helium supplies just weeks after its launch in 2005, rendering their primary instrument, the X-ray spectrometer, useless. In 2016, JAXA launched Hitomi, which broke apart shortly after reaching orbit. And now it seems that GRISM may be facing a similar fate. If you look closely at the Resolve spectra, you'll notice that they don't even go down to 1 keV energy. Now, this is really peculiar because GRISM is supposed to be sensitive from 0.3 keV to 12 keV. But we're not even seeing anything below 1.8 keV, so what's going on? Well, it turns out that they have a problem opening the gate valve. Now, the DWAR is the cryogenic cooler that houses the microcalorimeter. A lid, partially transparent to x-rays, is installed on top of the DWAR, and this is called the gate valve. This gate valve is made of a beryllium window and a stainless steel mesh. Now, this is not to be confused with the beryllium filter on the filter wheel, which I've seen several places incorrectly refer to. The filter wheel sits in front of Resolve, with options of filters to adjust the brightness and wavelength of the cosmic rays and x-ray sources as desired. On the filter wheel, there's six different options that you can switch between. So two open positions when you want to observe without any filters. One position with a low radioactive iron 55 filter. This is used to calibrate the camera because the iron 55 continuously emits a known X-ray spectrum serving as a reference point to what the spectrum should look like. There's a neutral density filter to reduce the overall brightness of X-ray sources so that you can observe really bright X-ray sources without being oversaturated. There's a polyimide filter to protect the detectors from contamination of visible light and ultraviolet radiation. And then lastly, there's the beryllium filter that blocks low energy X-rays, in particular background X-rays from the Earth's atmosphere. And this ensures that the data is cleaner and more focused on the X-ray signals of interest. Now, to be clear, it's not the filter wheel that's stuck. It's not stuck on the beryllium filter, but it's the gate valve. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. The gate valve is intrinsic to the DWA and it's also made up of beryllium like the filter. It blocks out low energy x-rays, but the primary purpose of the gate valve is to shield the microcalorimeter from contamination by dust particles and, and outgassing materials from the spacecraft during launch and orbital insertion. Now the gate valve is transparent to x-rays and it was always planned that they would observe through the gate valve for the first few months because this is whilst the temperature within the dewa needs to stabilize. 
Unfortunately, however, when the gate valve is closed, we can only see x-rays down to 2 keV. But with it open, we can go all the way down to 0.3 keV. Right now, the gate valve seems to be stuck. It's stuck. They just can't get it open, which means we can't see the universe through the coolest x-ray gas. That's where the most interesting things about galaxy cluster science can be done. JAXA and friends are trying all they can to shake it open, but only time will tell if they'll ever be able to get that off. It seems like the universe is really against us seeing the cool side of the universe. Until then, GRISM will still be able to do some amazing observations of higher energy objects, so black holes, supernovas, and hot galaxy clusters. But really, fingers crossed that they can find a way to get this beryllium lid off. That's all for this week's video. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting my channel. As always, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.